This video is a tutorial for Google Meet on the iPad. Google Meet allows us to host or join video meetings online, and along with the Google Calendar app, schedule meetings for the future. Please see the timestamps in the description below to see what I'm going to cover. When you open up the Google Meet app for the first time, you'll be asked to sign in. If you want to add other accounts to your Google Meet app or switch between them, you can click on the icon in the top right corner of the screen. This will display a list of all apps currently signed in, and you can click on a different account to switch to it. If you'd like to add another account, you can see this option at the bottom. Let's take a look at some of the settings inside the app. To find this, we can click on the icon, which is three horizontal lines in the top left corner of the screen. This will open up a menu on the left hand side. The top option is for settings. Once again, this window will display a list of all accounts currently signed in. If you click on one of these accounts, you'll see you have the option to set up Siri shortcuts. These are voice commands for the iPad, allowing you to set up shortcuts to start a new meeting or join a meeting using a meeting code. If you click on one of these options, you'll be able to set up a custom phrase that allows Siri to understand what you want to do. Back on the settings menu, at the bottom we can see Google app settings. This allows you to choose default apps. For example, if you click a link in Google Meet, which app should open. You can choose a default browser, a navigation app, and a calendar. There are two ways of joining a Google Meet meeting. If you receive a link in another app, for example, email, when you click on that link, it will automatically open the Google Meet app and help you join that meeting. Alternatively, you can join with a code. At the top of the screen, we can see a button for this called join with a code. If I click on this, I can type in the code that was given to me by the meeting organizer. Then I can tap on join in the top right corner of the screen. If you'd like to host the meeting, there are a few different options available for you here. You can click on new meeting at the top of the screen and the menu will appear at the bottom. The first option is to get a meeting link to share. This will generate a meeting link. Next to it is a copy icon that will copy this link to your clipboard, allowing you to paste it into another app, for example, email or a messaging app. We also have a blue button here called share invite. This will open up your iPad's share sheet, allowing you to share this link directly to another app. The second option on this menu allows you to start an instant meeting. This operates in a very similar way to the first option, except this time we are already in our meeting room. We can copy this link, or we can click on the blue share button to share to another app. The final option on this menu allows us to schedule a meeting in the future on Google Meet. We will need to have Google Calendar installed for this to work. Inside Google Calendar, you can add a title for your meeting. You can also schedule a date and a starting time. You can choose which calendar this event should be added to, and you can add people to join this meeting. Other options include adding a location, scheduling a reminder before the meeting, adding a description and an attachment. When you're done, hit save in the top right corner. Let's take a look at some of the options available to you when you're inside a meeting room. At the bottom of the screen, we can see four icons. The first of which is a red icon, allowing us to leave the meeting. Next to that, we can turn our camera on or off. And the third icon allows us to mute or unmute ourselves. With your camera turned on, you can actually decide on which of your iPad's cameras you want to use. In the top right corner of the screen, we can see a camera icon this will allow us to flip between the front facing and the rear camera on the iPad. The last of our four icons at the bottom contains three dots. This is a menu. The first menu item is for adding other people to join the meeting. When we click on this, a list of participants is presented. Above this, we can see share joining information. When we click on this, the share sheet is once again opened, allowing us to share the link to a different app. 
if we choose the next tab along called information, we'll be able to see the address for this meeting and click on the copy icon to copy this to our clipboard. You'll notice in the top left corner of the screen that our meeting code is always displayed. And if we click on this, the same menu as before is brought up. Back on this menu, we have the option to view in-call messages or the chat. From here, we can type messages to other participants in the meeting. The next icon on this menu allows us to share our screen. When we click on this, a menu will appear asking us which app we should share our screen to. You need to choose Google Meet. The next option allows us to turn on or off captions. Captions convert the sound of the people speaking into text, which is displayed on the bottom of the screen. And finally, we have some settings. The first setting permits Google Meet to make adjustments to your camera if you're in poor lighting conditions. And the second option allows us to choose a language for the captions. When someone tries to join your call, a pop-up will appear. This will allow you to admit them into the meeting or to deny entry. Now we have a participant in our meeting, let's take a look at some of our other options. If we click on our meeting code in the top left corner of the screen, we can now have a look at the list of participants. Next to each participant, we will see three dots. This is a menu giving us two options. The first allows us to pin this user's camera to the screen, meaning their camera is always visible to you. The second option allows us to remove them from the meeting entirely. Finally, if you would like to minimize this meeting to use other functions in the app, this is possible. If you click on the downwards facing arrow in the top left corner of the screen, the meeting will be minimized. We're still connected to this call. We can see this from the blue strip at the top, telling us we're in an ongoing call. But we can use other functions within this app. This can be quite useful if you're in a meeting and you want to schedule a meeting for next week. This will allow you to do that without leaving the call. To rejoin the meeting, click on the blue bar. So that's it for this tutorial for Google Meet on the iPad. If you found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe, and I'll be back soon with some more iPad tutorials.